Welcome to Beyond the Limit Show. Today, we have a special woman. Her name is Margaret Waweru. She is bold. She is tenacious. She is a definition of courage. I will not take it from her. I will let her tell us and share with us her inspiration and her journey and how she has been able to be where she is until today. Thank you very much. Karibu sana, Mami. Karibu. Welcome to Beyond the Limit Show. Amen. Thank, Thank you. you. At what point did you find out that you were suffering from cancer? And how did it happen? I was first diagnosed with uh, cancer of the breast in 1997. Mm -hmm. That's the right side of the breast. And I underwent surgery, chemotherapy, radiotherapy, and the five years treatment. That was under tamoxifen by then. Was it a first time visit that you were able, the, the doctors were able to find out that it was cancer? I was bathing in the morning, mm -hmm. just the way uh, a normal bath, and I felt a lump. Then I thought it was tonsillitis, and I went to the doctor. Mm -hmm. But the way the doctor examined, it showed through his face it was a bit alarming, and I was sent to the hospital for mammogram and immediately it was seen it was cancerous. By then it was stage 2B, so I had to undergo a quick surgery because before the problem continues. That time I had not gone to various hospitals, but later the problem recurred. It recurred on the left side mm -hmm. and it came in a big way. Mm -hmm where I started coughing throughout, continuous coughing day and night, a lot of pain on the right side, particularly the eye on the left side. Uh, we used to sleep with, uh, with, with soaking the, the towel so that it reduces the, the pain. I used to take high, high, high dosage of of painkillers uh, and I had gone to various hospitals. I was counting the, the hospitals I had attended were like 11 doctors. How has it affected you, number one, emotionally, physically, and for your family, financially? How has it been? It has been tough. Surely it has been tough because uh, if you're given the treatment for cancer, it takes all what you have. I remember, I remember a time when we were healthy. We were farmers. We used to take our chicken to, to, uh, to, 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 to various places. Mm. We used to take our milk to the, the daily uh, organizations. Mm. And all this was swept off by the treatment. Today we don't have all that. And so survival becomes very, very tough. It's not to me only, I believe even to other patients. It's very expensive. Would you advise our viewer to be taking up the checkups, the annual checkups? Yeah, mm, I would urge them to ensure that they go for their medical checkup at least once a year. Mm -hmm. Although still, we get filled through the medical checkup. Because sometimes there's a camp organized for a medical checkup, and then they just do the basics. You are told pap smear is done, you are told breast is checked, and then about a month or two later, you feel a lump, you go to the doctor, he tells you that you have cancer. So I would, I would encourage them to go to the doctor, and particularly for ladies, mammogram is very important. There are good hospitals with good facilities that uh, can help you go to be checked. It's very, very important. Even if it's not once a year, go as frequent as possible. And every time you feel a lump, all lumps are not cancerous, mm -hmm. yeah? 
So mm. if you find yourself with a lump, don't panic. Just go in, test it. It might not even be cancerous. It is true that many patients are being misdiagnosed. You take the wrong medication, it harms your body, and you know, there's nothing you can do. Because, you know, now, my journey to India, when I went there, a lot of problems were seen, I didn't know. When I underwent the PET scan in India, and it showed the, the, the lung was, had cancer, the diaphragm had cancer, mm -hmm. the, the, the neck, the, the, the throat, mm -hmm. the breast on the other side, mm -hmm. all these were not seen in Kenya. At what point did the idea for the support group, the cancer support group, come? When I first went to radiotherapy in Kenyatta, and I would see a lot of patients suffering with the different um, stages of problems. Then I was just doing my counseling like that. At the time, I used to work in Kikuyu Mission Hospital, and I used to wake up very early, go bed to bed before I start to work, and give comfort to the patients. Until now, when I went to India, and was diagnosed with stage four of cancer. And I said, Lord, when I get back, and I will start a support group. How would you say you, as a member of the cancer support group, have benefited? And also, how has the, your larger family benefited from it? These are many patients who are ailing, where we meet once a month, we comfort one another, we give our experience, and life continues. Uh, what are the difference that, uh, that the support, the, can the Africa Cancer Support Group is making to the survivors that are in it? You don't go to see a patient bare hand. And so what we decided is uh, for us to get the kit to buy that fruit to the patient or sometimes buy drugs to that patient, we decided to print some t-shirts where we, we sell the t-shirts at a thousand shillings. So every person who buys the t-shirt at a thousand shillings, it's one way of preaching the gospel. You may not be able to walk to where the patient is, but while you're seated in the office and you have already bought the T-shirt, you have done the walking. You have done, you have given hope to that patient. Do cancer patients also go through stigma? They see like the, the cancer patient, you know, is like, it's a nomen. Or maybe it's a curse. And so you may not be accepted in the house or by the community because you are a caste family. The patients undergo trauma. Others is the finance part. It can also cause stigma because you keep disturbing the community. I was diagnosed with this. Can we do a fundraiser? Other people are not ready for that. The stigma on the side of finances. If you are not able and you continue, you, you rely on the community, they'll get fed up with you because they'll call you a borrower every time you have a problem, you required this type of surgery, you are required this type of PET scan, you are not able, you need their pockets. Some of them get fed up with you and they call you a borrower. And for how long are you going to borrow? That one puts you down. Others is the case of employment. A cancer patient, say like she's undergoing chemotherapy. After every three weeks, chemotherapy. Every three weeks, so you have to borrow permission from your workplace. Some employers get fed up with these permissions of patients.
Of course that one. It puts you down. There are thousand and one reasons. Or oh, so many that cause a stigma. But God gives this patient, this patient the grace. What would you expect from the larger society, our community, our government? What would you expect? I thank God I'm, uh, uh, I'm with Citizen today. The other day I was at Medanta Hospital mm -hmm. and uh, I was sharing uh, with a friend who was undergoing chemotherapy. And one thing we said, I wish we can get an opportunity to just say thank you to the government. Now, why am I saying thank you to the government? The NHIF kit. The other, you know, I am a beneficiary of the National Hospital Insurance Fund, where just recently I went to the doctor and the doctor prescribed me uh, MRI and CT scan. The hospitals I went, the, it's an expensive, expensive investigation, which was costing over 60,000 shillings. I couldn't afford that. And believe you me, when I registered with the NHIF and I chose a hospital of a choice, I was done MRI free. Thank you, Mami. Thank you for coming. You're a beacon of hope and you're a true inspiration. That has been Beyond the Limit Show with Margaret Wawero, who is here to encourage us and share with us her journey of what she has been through together with her family and friends that have really seen her through her journey, surviving cancer, lived free for some time, then again in 2010, and she's still fighting on. She's a fighter, she's my namesake. She's a fighter. I've never seen a Margaret that does not fight. And above and beyond everything, she believes in God. And God has been her pillar. She's here, she's telling her story to encourage you. You can also do the same. Tomorrow you might be our guest. Be encouraged, God bless you heaven shine upon you. I have been your host, Magika Hero.